Hello, welcome back to Foundation Doctrines. Just want to let you know in advance, um, I'll go over a lot of scriptures during this time. So if you want to go ahead and get a paper and pad so that you can take some notes, that would be great. Also want to let you know um, to go ahead if you haven't already uh, to subscribe, like and share. Uh, this series um, is really dealing with the foundation doctrine based upon Hebrews chapter six, verses one and two. These foundation doctrines are really the, the, the like it, self-explanatory in that it's the foundation of we um, believers, why we do what we do, um, and what the, what the um, let's see, what, what's the word I wanna use? Um, it is the foundation of everything that we do. Let's say it that way. So today, we're, talk, we're talking about baptism in the Holy Spirit. And it's one of my favorite out of all the doctrines, even though I love every one of them. Um, it's the one that is the game changer, in my opinion, because yes, you can be a believer, you can be an avid Bible reader, you can be a worshiper, you can be someone who is committed to prayer. And, and I mean, you can be very much engaged in the kingdom of God. Um, but baptism in the Holy Spirit is another level. It really, really is. It is what I call, um, it, it, is, it is the entryway into the supernatural. And um, it's, one of the, it's also one of those things where Holy Spirit um, is a lot of times misunderstood. Uh, it is, he is um, feared for the wrong reasons. Um, you know, just lots of different types of discussions that I've heard in my lifetime of being a Christian. And so I want to dispel some of those, some of those myths. I want to bring understanding. I want to bring clarity in terms of who he is and what he does so that you can have a real encounter with him um, so that you are comfortable with inviting Holy Spirit into your life. Um, there are lots of, you know, if you are a believer of Jesus Christ, then certainly you have Jesus in your life. But there, there are lots of Christians, in my opinion as well, who ignore the Holy Spirit, who don't necessarily acknowledge him for his fullness or experience him in his fullness. And we have a really great opportunity to do that. So the Holy Spirit, who is the Holy Spirit? The Holy Spirit is one of the co-equals of the Godhead, you know, you hear, or, or of what we, what we also call the Trinity. So you have God the Father, Jesus the Son, and the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit um, is God, um, according to Acts 5, 3 and 4. He is Lord, according to 2 Corinthians 3, 17 and 18. Now, the Holy Spirit is also known by other names um, in the Bible. Or, and so you would hear someone say, um, or hear the, or as you read the Bible, it would say the spirit of truth, um, which is a, a reference in John 16, 13. You would hear the spirit of Christ, um, which is referenced in Romans 8, 9. And you'd also hear the comforter, which is more popular um, in certain denominations, which would come out of John 14, 26. All of these describe um, the Holy Spirit or speak to him, to who he is. Um, I'm just looking at some notes <laughs> as usual, right? Now, there are a lot of other names that the, that the, that the Bible um, makes reference to in terms of the Holy Spirit. And so what I will do is I will put those in the notes and that way you can kind of get some more references as it relates to the Holy Spirit. Now, how is the Holy Spirit closely related to the scriptures? Well, the Holy Spirit really is the author of the scriptures. There are a lot of there are a lot of conversations where people will say, you know, the Bible is written by man. And yes, that is true. But those men were inspired by the Holy Spirit to write what they did, which is which has become the scriptures. So technically, the original author of the scriptures is the Holy Spirit. And, and the scripture that speaks to that is 2 Peter 1, uh, verses 20 and 21. Now, the Holy Spirit is also, because he's the author, he is the interpreter of the scriptures. 
He's the one who gives understanding. Um, I've heard people say over and over again, I read the Bible and I really don't understand it. I read it and I just can't get it. Okay, fine. What One thing that I would encourage you to do is before you sit down to read the Bible, as you sit down to read the Bible, ask the Holy Spirit to give you understanding. Ask him over and over again to give you understanding because truly, Anyone who spent any length of time in the Bible will tell you, and I can attest to this myself. You can read the scriptures over and over again. Let's say every year you read the Bible, which is a, which is a practice of mine. You read through the Bible. Every time I read it, I read the same exact scriptures over and over and over again, but I get something new every single time. And I'm I'm like, how did I not see this before? Like, why does this mean? You know, I mean, such. It's, it's a greater level of understanding every single time. And I'm so amazed by it. Um, and I attribute that really to the Holy Spirit because I, you know, I, I like any new reader felt like I don't understand what this means. How does this apply to my life? Holy Spirit, help me to understand what this is. Holy Spirit is the interpreter of scriptures. And you can, that can also be found in John 16, 13 and 14. Now, what is the baptism? What is baptism with the Holy Spirit? It is a baptism of the it is a baptism of the believer into the Holy Spirit, and with this experience, he's given entrance into the unlimited, measureless power to do the works of Christ. Now, I, I like when I when I teach children about this, I generally say to them, you know how um, superheroes in the movies they start out being a regular person, a Superman, um, a uh, Spider-Man, you know, any of those people, right? They start out as regular people. And then at some point, they tap into their supernatural, their superpowers, right? Um, by, by various means, be, depending on who the character is. So I tell kids, you have you as a believer of Jesus Christ, you have superpowers. Um, the Holy Spirit empowers you to do things beyond what you as a regular kid could do. And I and I, I truly, truly mean that. Um, he gives us, he empowers us to do the works of God in ways that we never could do on our own. Um, and it's so fascinating, it's so powerful. Um, I mean, I can't say enough about it. I love, 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 love it. Acts 1 is the first account in terms of how, when the Holy Spirit came in. And that scripture, I'll actually read that scripture. It says, but ye shall receive power after that the Holy Ghost has come upon you and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem in, and in Judea and in Samaria and unto the uttermost parts of the earth. Now, this is when, you know, the people of God gathered together on one accord and, and followed the instructions to wait upon God and the Holy Spirit came and filled them. Now, it's an amazing thing and it's a wonderful thing. The benefits of being baptized in the Holy Spirit, there are, there are numbers of them. One, you have the authority to witness. Like, you know, you hear people say and they talk about testimonies. However you came to Christ, however you came to believe in Jesus Christ, is your testimony. No one on earth can take that testimony away from you. You can bear witness to what God has done in your life and how he's transformed your life. Same thing with the Holy Spirit. As the Holy Spirit uh, baptizes you, gives you greater understanding, you can attest to that understanding um, where no one can refute, you know what I mean, uh, your level. Or, or the level of understanding that you now have. Um, another benefit of baptism of the Holy Spirit is like you have an inspiration for true worship. There are people who go to church and, you know, um, in, in most, dare I say, all congregations, no matter what your denomination, music is a part of your service, right? And there are people who, you know, they listen, maybe they don't sing. Maybe they sing softly. Maybe they sing loud. Maybe they clap their hands. Maybe they do a dance. Worship, worship is, there are various ways to worship God. But 
if you ever notice in a service where there's someone <laughs> and look and we say there's always one right um someone who who is lifting their hands they're worshiping god they they are cr clapping crying they may be laid out prostrate and i'm not saying that doing all of that is required what i am saying though there is a relationship that you develop with holy spirit where you have an understanding of who who god is at, a, at another level and your gratitude to him leads you to express it in every way that you can in a worship service in your home in life no matter what and so you're inspired by the holy spirit to worship god um, in various ways, not just in singing and music, but in various ways, because you have a you now have a new, a renewed understanding of who, of who God is. Now, Holy Spirit will give you the power, give you power in prayer. Lots of people have difficulty praying. You know, I've heard people say, "Well, I don't know what to pray." Um, you know, here's this is this is a situation that I'm dealing with, but I don't really know what to pray. Holy Spirit will give you exactly what to pray, it, especially if it's another person's situation. Someone comes to you and say, can you please pray for me or can you please pray for my child? Can you please pray for whatever my situation? And Holy Spirit will give you the words to say the exact ones, the ones that come from the father that that when he hears those words out of your mouth, he's moving expediently. Holy Spirit, like I said before, will give you understanding of the scriptures. You know, they're they're not the Bible is not just stories. It's history. And not only is it history, but it's life. And so the power of the Holy Spirit will will, you know, it's like when you're sitting in a service and then let's say after the service, you talk to fellow parishioners and you all heard the same message in a different way. I may get one thing, you may get something else, the third person may get something else completely. Holy Spirit is speaking to all of us in that one message um, because it's based upon his relationship and who we are. I can't say enough about, uh, about understanding the, the scriptures through the Holy Spirit, it's, it's amazing. Um, another benefit of, of, of Holy Spirit is guidance from God as we're, it's like being able the Holy Spirit gives you the ability to hear the voice of God. Now, I know there are lots of apprehensions about hearing the voice of God. So I just want to touch on that for a minute. Um, how I explain hearing the voice of God is like this. There, it, hearing the voice of God doesn't necessarily have to be you, just like you hear my voice right now on this video. It, and that's what we call an audible voice. Now, God has rendered an audible voice to, to people, but that's not typically what I'm talking about. Um, hearing the voice of God is what I describe as a knowing. It's almost like, um, you know, you hear people make the phrase, you know, something told me to turn down this street instead of the one I usually go down. Something told me to, you know, go back home and you know you discover your stove was still on or whatever you know what i mean like we always say something told me i attribute something to holy spirit holy spirit told you especially if you're if you're a believer holy spirit told you he warns he guides he gives us intel insight into a situation that we didn't know before and that we wouldn't know without him so the thing is there's a guiding, you know, you're making a decision and you're praying, Lord, show me what I should do. And then Holy Spirit comes and gives you the answer. He may give you the answer through a person. He may give it through reading something, listening to something, seeing something or that knowing. It's like you hear it's like a voice whispering in your in your soul that tells you what what you should do. That is hearing the voice of God. And there, as you develop a stronger relationship and a closer relationship with him, the louder that voice becomes and the surer you are of that voice. I'll give an example. When I first really, when I, when I first got baptized in the Holy Spirit, so, some rather amazing things happened <laughs> that I could not explain. Um, so one of those is I would get up in the morning before class and have prayer time like i would 
we, um, I belong to a Bible study group and we would meet in the chapel and pray or, you know, meet in a location and pray. Um, but I would also come back to my room because it was early morning. I would come back to my room and I would also pray privately. I would read my Bible. Um, I had a, you know, a prayer list, people that, you know, I wanted to pray for people, you know, basically that weren't believers. And so I would pray for them um, before I got ready to go to class. So in my prayer time, I remember this one time, and this, this happened a few times. I remember, but I remember the first time it happened. Um, the Holy Spirit, I, I, I felt like the Holy Spirit said, your, um, you know, your math class, and I'm just giving an example because I don't remember the exact class, is canceled today. Now, I <laughs> am a, I was a honor student, you know, like school, I love school and, you know, I'm one of those, those kids that's not going to ditch school no matter what. So while I heard your class is canceled today, I didn't believe it because I was just like, this must be the devil trying to get, you know, throw me off and I'm going to class. Lo and behold, I get to class and there's a note the professor has written on the board, no class today, see you next time. I was so amazed because I'm like, wow, I literally heard, I heard that this morning. I literally heard that this morning. So another time, so it happened again. The second time, I, again, I, I didn't trust it I, because I, was, I wasn't used to hearing, I didn't know that, recognize that as the voice of God. Again, another class. That your class is going to be canceled today. I go to that class, same thing. Professor has a note on the board, no class today. So now I'm like, okay, is this a, is this a thing? <laughs> so maybe, I don't know, third, fourth, fifth time, I don't know the actual number, but eventually I heard the voice saying this particular class is going to be canceled and I didn't go. Now, mind you, I'm so nervous. I'm so nervous, but I am determined to trust God because, you know, I, I, you know, I was telling a friend and, you know, about this experience and they said, well, you know, maybe God is giving you, you know, giving you insight. That's possible. And I thought, really? Would God, be, would God really do that for me? Like, tell me what's going to happen in advance. Um, because I knew nothing of the scriptures that speak to God actually doing that prophetically. Well, anyway, I didn't go to class and I, and I was so nervous, so nervous because, but I was determined to trust God. And so like immediately after that class, I called a classmate who was in that same class with me and said, Hey, um, you know, what, what was class about? You know, do you have notes? And they were like, Oh no, um, there was no class today. And I was like, Whoa! <laughs> so I felt like, okay, I'm on to something now. God is speaking to me and telling me things about my life, about my future, about my day. So it encouraged me and it inspired me to say, okay, God, what is today going to be like? Now I'm, now I want to be proactive and I'm like, okay, God, what do you want me to do today? Where, where are we going today? What's going to happen today? Let's, let's talk about it. Um, and literally that has been, um, I mean, that's been a, that's a go-to for me. I mean, that was so many <laughs> decades, <laughs> that was decades ago. But to this day, I get up in the morning and I pray early and I'm like, okay, Lord, what's the day like? Um, and I can always, I, there's always a successful day if I listen to the Holy Spirit and, and am guided by him. God is a loving father who has given us, given us the Holy Spirit to help us, to lead and guide us. And if you're going to trust anybody in life, I recommend that you trust the Holy Spirit. I recommend that you get to know him, that you come to a relationship with him that, that literally you don't, you don't make moves without him. Um, so many other stories. Well, okay, I'll, I'll tell you more stories as I go through the lesson. Um, so again, hearing the voice of God is, is big, it's key. Um, and then also the ability to use your spiritual gifts. Wow. Okay. So my next story, using your spiritual gifts. Um, 
I remember one of the first times that I, okay, so let me just give you a, script, a, a, a scripture reference in regards to this. So if you look at 1 Corinthians uh, 1 verses 5 through 7, you can also look at 1 Corinthians 14, 1. But in Corinthians, it talks about spiritual gifts, um, you know, and they're, you know, it lists them out and that sort of thing. Now, in particular, there, there's motivational gifts, there's spiritual gifts, which I kind of separate in terms of categories. Other people may separate them differently. But just to give you an example, because I want, I want it to be clear what I mean when I say spiritual gifts. There is a spiritual gift that is called the word of knowledge. And I remember again, I've been baptized in the Holy Spirit and, 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 and lots of strange things have been hap started to happen as a result of that, I'm convinced. And I remember one time that I was praying and um, Holy Spirit said to me, gave, told me something about a classmate. Now, this classmate was not necessarily a friend of mine. You know, we, we, we didn't engage often at all. We just had a class together. That's it. And, um, and, and what they shared with me was personal. Um, it had to do with their calling. And, and it was a corrective message. Like, if you don't do this, you, this will happen kind of situation. Now, I thought it strange and I thought and I dismissed it at first because I was like, why did that come to my mind? You know, because I'm still learning how to hear the voice of God. And so I'm like, why would God tell me something about that person? I don't even know that person like that. So I get to class and and I can barely concentrate in class because now I hear the voice louder, like repeating the very same thing I heard that morning. And I'm like, God. And now I'm hearing God say, go after class, go to that person and tell them what I said. I'm shaking. <laughs> I'm shaking because I'm like, God, come on, come on. You can't really like it. I'm, I'm having this mental conversation in my mind. I'm in class and I'm like, I'm, in my mind, I'm like, God, you can't be serious that you're asking me to go to this person who I barely know to say something so personal, what in the world, you know? And so I'm having this full on conversation now by the end of class and, and, and it felt like if I didn't deliver this message that I was gonna be in trouble. That's really, that's really how it was because God was like, if you, do you want this person, do you wanna be responsible for this person not fulfilling the call of God on their lives? And I'm like, seriously, God? Like, I, I just thought you got to be kidding me, right? So, so now I'm faced with, am I going to obey God or not? I mean, that's really what it came down to. And I'm so, I'm so afraid. Like, I'm so like thinking about how is this person going to respond? Do they, are they think, are they going to think I've lost my mind? You know, just I'm all a plethora of thoughts go through my mind. Well, anyway, lo and behold, my professor decides to um, dismiss class early. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, no. OK, 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 let me get myself together. And I'm trying to prep my own mind because I'm just so nervous about delivering this message. And as soon as class is over, as soon as he dismisses class, this particular person walks out of class. Like they, like they, you know what I mean? Like they just, they dart out the door. Now I think I'm off the hook. Cause I'm like, they ran off so quick. Like I couldn't even, the minute I turned to get my bag and I turned back, I'm like, they're gone. I go out in the hallway. I, I don't see them. Literally they have left the building. So I'm like, well, God, I would have told them. <laughs> so I'm in the building, you know, um, I worked for this professor. So I was, you know, picking up different, you know, stuff in the classroom, taking it to his office or whatever, you know, doing my, my job. And um, the, per the classmate comes back into the building. 
we literally like run into each other in the hallway. And I'm like, oh, and so they say, oh, I forgot. I forgot my book. I left my book in the class. So I'm like, Ooh. so they go get the book and they cut and I'm still in the hallway. I'm stunned. I, I can't really move. And so they come out in the hallway and I said, excuse me. I said, before you go, I said, can I just, can I talk to you for a second? And they say, sure. I said, I know this might sound very uh, random and strange, but I, j I, feel like I got a word for you. Um, I feel like I have a message from God for you, whatever, however I said it. And this is what it is. So I literally tell this person what I felt like God said to me verbatim. And he pauses, he looks at me and pauses and says, that is 100% God. Only God could tell you that. And I appreciate you telling me, I, I appreciate you delivering the message. I'm like, oh. and then he walks off. I mean, literally. And I'm like, oh my God. Oh, I'm amazed. I'm amazed that one, that I know something that I would have never known. Like this person never told me, no one ever told me this about this individual. I'm amazed that God would tell me of all people. And I'm amazed that it resonated with this person to identify it as God himself. When I tell you Holy Spirit is amazing, I'm not kidding. I'm not kidding. This was a be this was the beginning of a life of prophecy of prophetic utterance, which I didn't even have a name for it. Like I didn't even know anything. I never heard the word prophetic. I never heard the I mean pro I never I didn't know what prophecy was at that time. I didn't know anything about intercession. Even though I was praying for people, I didn't know the word intercession. There are lots of stuff I didn't know about the Bible. Tons of it, right? I just had a little piece of instruction and I was determined to be obedient to God because I love God and to see where it was going to take me. I just, I mean, that's all I, that's the only explanation that I have for it. But it was the beginning of a quest. I don't I don't know if I want to call it a quest. It was the beginning of my of of my life in the supernatural because from that day God began to show me more. Like I I like I dream all the time and I've I've been a dreamer forever. So my dreams were accurate like i would dream about a person i would go to that person and say i had a dream about you this is the dream and they would say oh my goodness god you know like every single or people god would give me a message to go to someone tell them something i'm still nervous you know uh, I, i'm i'm less nervous today because i've done it for so many years but at that time in college i was quite nervous every single time um but god began to show me things about people so much so that i'm like god come on <laughs> can't take it i can't take it i don't know what this is I, I don't know why you're doing this you know i don't understand but the more obedient or the more yeah the more obedient that i was the less nervous i was like i began to trust my relationship with god and, and the holy spirit enough to just do whatever he said and i can tell you to this date when i when god sends me to people it's spot on. I mean, I haven't had a person say to me, that's not right. They may have said, and it's funny, uh, the Lord, in my adult life recently, let's say uh, this happened last year, the Lord, a, a, a friend of mine was staying at, you know, staying at our house and I, God gave me a word for her. And it, that wasn't unusual to me because I've been doing this for a while, but I, I shared the word with her and she was like, mm, I don't know. Now, that's the first time somebody said, I, you know what I mean? Like, and I was like, okay, well, that's what I heard, you know, and I'm, and I'm, I'm open if, you know, like if I'm wrong, I'm, I'm willing to admit that I'm wrong on a situation like that. Cause I'm, you know, I don't want to flippantly, uh, what do you call it? Flippantly, uh, speak for God. And I don't know what I'm talking about. You know what I mean? Like I'm open to, to that, to being corrected in that area. If it calls for it. Mind you, this person came back to my house um, some months later and said, remember that word that you gave me? That thing actually came to pass. And I was like, 
I'm like, wow. When I tell you again, Holy Spirit gives you, Holy Spirit activates, the baptism of the Holy Spirit activates your spiritual gifts. And that's just one gift. Word of knowledge is just one gift. There are others that when, when it happens, and, then, and here's something else I also want you to know, because here's, here's where the enemy divides the people of God. You see people on TV and, you know, tell it, tell the evangelist, get a big, got to get a bad rap. And I understand there are some people in the body of who, are, who have, have masqueraded as sheep in the body of Christ. I understand that. Um, but you see people who, who perform, who, who administer healing, who prophesy, who, you know, who operate in their gifts on television. And we, what I tend to see people do is even believers is either they throw it all out or they take it all, they take all of it in, including the foolishness. We must come to a place as believers that we discern good and evil right and wrong, true and false. It's our responsibility to discern that. And if you don't have that discernment, I, I ask that you, I encourage you to pray for that discernment because the gifts of the spirit are real. The gifts of the spirit are beneficial. I cannot tell you, I cannot say enough about that. Um, the Holy Spirit is a promise to us. It's a gift. From, he's a gift of, from God, a gift of God for us. Um, and I think, let's see, I said earlier, Acts 1-8 is where we, where we see Holy Spirit in action. Um, another thing too, we'll put it this way. It was talked about in that Acts 2 verses one through four is where we see it happening. So God fulfilled the prophecy of Joel and poured out the Holy Spirit one year on the feast of, feast of the day of Pentecost. And this was after Jesus was resurrected and ascended into heaven. Now, how do you receive the Holy Spirit? The first thing, you, you must uh, obey God's word. You must be someone who is committed to obeying God's word. And only you and God know that. Um, you must thirst, you must, you know, you must want the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit is not going to bust into your life. He's not going to take, take, uh, take you over. You know what I mean? Um, and to give you a distinction, the enemy, the devil, Satan, or whatever name you want to give him, Lucifer, will take over your life if you let him in. He will he will literally take it over and and rule it. He will he will he will come into your life and he will rule you. He will dictate what you do and he will make you do what he wants you to do. The Holy Spirit on the other hand will only come if you allow him, you give him permission to come into your life, to come into your into your into to fill your fill your spirit and move and operate there is a difference the other thing about receiving the holy spirit you got to ask him you got to invite him in ask for the gift of the holy uh, for the baptism of the holy spirit and it's not it doesn't have to be dramatic <laughs> cuz when you when we talk when I when I've taught this um message and this lesson in person with people people start getting really nervous about the holy spirit and i want to dispel all your nervousness because i'm telling you i'm telling you i'm telling you holy spirit is amazing and wonderful and he's a gentleman he will never force you to do anything um the other thing is you got to receive the holy spirit Sometimes people come under condemnation and feel like, oh, I'm not good enough or I'm not, you know, this enough and I don't know enough scriptures. You know, you, you go through all these things thinking that that's a requirement per se. It's a, yes, yes, it's, in, it's important for you to be a believer. It's important for you to be obedient. Sure, it's important for you to want the Holy Spirit because he's not coming if you don't want him and he's not coming if you don't invite him. 
we're we like people are the same we don't want to go anywhere that we're not invited we don't want to go if people don't want us around we don't want to be in that environment um and the other things you got to receive it because they're you know it's he's a gift you can't reject him and expect him at the same time so in that as you as you obey god's word as you want you know thirst for the holy spirit and you ask him into your life ask him to fill you and you receive him what you find is an amazing experience and encounter with god now what are the ways that you that it can be imparted to you now you can receive an outpouring like um a, an example not limited to but just an example you can be in a service and you know the leader the worship leader the pastor the the intercessor whoever can invite the holy spirit into the service may, they may have prayed that before service happened and you can be in a service and holy spirit and god or there's an outpouring of god and you can receive it right there you can be and it doesn't have to be a service but i'm just saying a, a corporate group you can be in a bible study you can be in a group of people whatever the case and an outpouring can happen where God will, just like in Acts, where God will pour out his spirit and, and you receive that in, in filling. You can even pray in a corporate setting for the Holy Spirit to pour himself out on you. The other thing is you can receive the Holy Spirit by the ministry of laying on of hands. Somebody can, you can come, you know, people call, uh, have an altar call. Um, and for anybody that wants to be baptized in the Holy Spirit, you go up and, you know, the pastor, preacher, whomever lays hands on you and, you know, and prays a prayer and you receive the Holy Spirit. Then that happened to me. I was in a Bible study on college campus and, um, you know, someone was teaching this and um, they said, you know, does, is there anybody that wants to receive the Holy Spirit? And I was like, yes, because <laughs> I was like, look if 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 he's going to, i want to know the supernatural i was i was i was so fascinated by all that i heard about the holy spirit and so i was like yes sign me up and the person laid their hands on me prayed and bam that was that now how it says what is the sign I'm, I'm going through my notes what is the sign that is given to those who are baptized in the holy spirit they receive the sign of speaking in tongues. This is a supernatural sign that the Holy Spirit can speak through a believer. Now, again, there are certain denominations who have who, who feel like, you know, it doesn't take all that. We don't believe in that. And I encourage you to believe the Bible because the Bible clearly speaks of people speaking in tongues. It gives instructions about how it should look, what people should do when it should happen it gives him it gives you an indication that it's real so it would behoove you no matter what denomination you belong to to believe the bible i, I mean i i can't say it any other way um in fact acts 19 6 is a good scripture reference as it relates to speaking in tongues and the thing about it and i you know that's probably a whole nother teaching but the thing about speaking in tongues is it is you uh, acquire another way of saying speaking in tongues. You acquire a prayer language. In other words, your spirit, you, you know, we as human beings are um, body, soul and spirit. When you're baptized in the Holy Spirit, your spirit communicates directly to God. So when you're speaking in tongues, you are communicating directly to God. Your mind doesn't know what you're talking about. Other people don't know what you're talking about necessarily, but you, but God does, because he's the one who needs to hear that prayer. It is the purest prayer that you can make. Sometimes, like I said earlier, people say, well, I don't know what to pray. When you are baptized in the Holy Spirit, pray in the Spirit. And when you, when you get that feeling, infilling and you pray in the Spirit, that's a, another term of, uh, another way of saying speaking in tongues pray that and i tell you what you'll see things happen like never before um and speaking in tongues you know is not um you can do that at any time 
anytime you want to. And, you know, in a corporate setting, in, and when I say anytime, I'm saying people always look for feelings, th feelings. Um, they look for emotions, and that's not necessarily a requirement for speaking in tongues. In fact, it's not a requirement for speaking in tongues. It is simply a sign that the Holy Ghost is present um, in you and, ha and has now entered in, you've entered into a supernatural dimension. Um, again, does it, does it demand that you speak in tongues to, you know, indicate that you've been baptized in the Holy Spirit? No, but there are examples of it happening, which leads us to believe as we live in the 21st century that it can happen for us just like it happened for them. So I hope that makes sense. Um, what I can, what I can say to you is as I have, um, used my prayer language as I continue to pray, I pray in English and I pray in the, in, uh, in the Holy, in Holy Spirit. I pray, I speak in tongues and they go hand in hand and they have, they have tremendously, uh, they, I have received tremendous results from doing both in private and in corporate settings. So I encourage you, I encourage you to invite Holy Spirit into your life, to encourage him to show you, to give you, to op activate your spiritual gifts, to learn about the spiritual gifts um, because each of us have them. And God is so gracious to allow us to use them at different times. I just encourage you to get to know those. I encourage you as an adult believer to encourage your children to receive the baptism of the Holy Spirit. Cause I'm telling you, here's one thing. And, and this, I learned this when I was on the mission field in France, people can get saved and, you know, give their lives over to Christ, but, the, but, in a, but an, an assurance that they will stay with Christ is being baptized in the Holy Spirit. Literally, you know, our a host, uh, our guide, uh, while I was in France, while our team was in France, they said that to us. They said, listen, if you're going to offer Christ and you're going to, um, you know, get, what do you call it, convert people, you need to go ahead and get them baptized in the Holy Spirit. Otherwise, it's not going to take. Like, they, like they'll, they'll just go back to the world and like it never happened. And um, and I see that happen. Not you know, I live in the United States, and I see that happen with people as well. They 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 have an emotional experience. They get saved on that day, but they 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 you know, it doesn't take long for them to go back to their old life and be worse off at, actually than they were before. So I encourage you, really. Holy Spirit's amazing. I'm telling you, He's amazing. Uh, he's honest and true, um, tried and true, and um, will will give will help you discover more things about God and and yourself in the kingdom as you engage. Again, um, subscribe to this channel, like, share. Anyone that you believe would benefit from this message or this series, go ahead and share. I I totally invite you. And thank you so much for listening. I will see you next time as we continue on with Foundation Doctrine.